we can start with the chiropetrics level two and uh, this is not a boot to root machine we have to find the uh, loopholes and we have to get the root axis so over here on the linux i basically use the netlist code to identify the number of posts and we can see that the ip address of the target is 192.168.0.1 so let's move it over here So over here, we have an uh, interface, we have a uh, login page over here. Hmm? And uh, before the attacking phase, let's see what, you, what we can find through the nmap scan. So I'm going to use bonus, uh, before, and the IP address. So our main objective of NMAP is to perform to check the services and their version, which is running in the back end of the server. So over here, I can see we have a remote system login path. And for this session, I will need the help of Burp Suite. So I'm going to run Burp Suite over here. So Hello? Uh, yes. Yeah, sorry. Uh, so we're going to run web suite over here, first of all. So I'm going to configure the web suite. I'm a local host IP address. So let's do network. Doing with the banner proxy. And uh, certificate. We install the certificate over here. Yes. So here this one so we're gonna use our verb suit for the pen testing part so over here we have a remote system login show so what are we gonna do over here we're gonna try we're gonna use our verb suit to check and perform an interception part so 
what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna I'm gonna try. Uh, we have a login page, demo administrator, and uh, in the end map, I can see the port 22 is open over there. Okay. Port 80 is there that we can see, and over here we can see it's a CentOS operating system. We have triple one RPC bind, and we have 443, which is saying over here. And we have 361, which is over here, 3306, which is your MySQL is running over there in the back end. Oh, so first of all, when we have a login page, we try to bypass this one with the help of SQL authentication bypass feature. Hmm? So what we can do over here, we can try to intercept the request. For example, let's do one, let's do two. And uh, we can simply use interception part, like this one. So we have a request. So I'm going to forward this request to the repeater. And I'm going to drop the packet. So over here on the repeater mode, I can see the request which you have over here. So I'm going to use some error, like at forward slash, to check the error over there. So I can see it's showing 200. Let's try error over here. Let's forward back, back, uh, backward slash. Same thing. Let's try with a single code and single code over here also. Nothing. Or we can try over here. We can see nothing is happening. So as a pen tester, what can I do? I can simply uh, try to log in or bypass the things. So over here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a universal key. Let me say. So over here, I'm going to use a single quote uh, or condition function. One is equal to one and minus minus x. So over here, there's one one thing which is we have to use plus because we have to merge those things like this. One. Then logged in as an administrator. You can see over here. I start the HTML and you are logged in as an administrator. That this one is equal to one query has been broken over here, and we can see that logged in as an administrator. Let's see the response code. Okay. Let's try over here and see. The first thing that we can see over here that the login page was vulnerable to MySQL server which is your SQL Boolean authentication part. Otherwise, what you can do, you can try the intruder to perform a brute force attack over there. All you can do is you can download the cheat sheets from the Google, for example, you can download SQL authentication bypass cheat sheet. Most of the pen tester, when they're doing a pen testing on the login form, they simply create a word list of these queries or condition one is equal to one. You can make a text file of these queries and you can use it on a brute force attack on the login form. You can see they all are same, just they have some other queries, some admin, single code bracket or condition they have a condition over there you can see over here so the most important thing which i was talking about how we can simply use a burp switch to simply check the web application part over here and i can see over here they have given a web console to contract over here so over here let's see it's asking me a ping a machine on the network Ping a machine and a network. So, what could be the possibility? So, let's see if I do. Uh, let's write uh, cross security. First of all, ping a machine and a network. So, it's going to take some IP address, first of all. So, it's basically reflecting the cross security. Record. So, I'm going to use some scripts, by the way, some normal scripts, JavaScripts. Let's see it works. Let's use alert function and let's say let's do a hacker. 
like that. So we can see that this is getting reflected. So we're getting the output when I'm simply using this one. So it could be a offset skipping attack. Mm -hmm. So most of the time, reflected, reflected. Uh, this is the reflected one. Reflected one, right? Mm -hmm. Because I can see this will not store on that server side. If this stored, that it will be grateful. Yeah. Otherwise, it's only a reflected normal one. So we can see we got the reflected. So in this possibilities, first of all, he's asking me for an IP address to ping. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use an IP address, a normal local host. Let's submit this one. What will happen? See. So in the back end, I can see they, it's basically pinging the machine on the server side. So it's saying ping 1270.091 and it's, it's sending 84, 56 to 84 bytes of packets. And we can see it's sending 64 bytes of packets from the 127. So over here, we have a web console. So what we can do, uh, let's check if you can find any vulnerabilities over there. Okay, so over here, what we're gonna do, we're gonna try to manipulate. So I was using 1.0.0.1. So when I entered this one, simply it asking me for uh, pinging the machine. So what we can do as a OWASP top 10, let's move to the OWASP top 10. OWASP top 10. So let's talk about the the attack called injection. Okay, so uh, gray campus, I would say. Yeah, so over here, we can see the first OWASP stop there attack, which is your injection. Injection attack occurs when the user is able to input untrusted data and taking the application of the system to execute initiate commands, okay. Injection can be your SQL queries, your PHP queries, your LDAP queries, and OS commands. So over here, we have different parts. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna check one by one, all the things. So our main objective would be our main objective would be to find the loopholes on the server side. So we can see what to inject OS uh, queries, OS commands, codes, and URL annotations, and where to inject wherever a user input is required, or you can use it for modified data. It can be a text box, a username and password field, a feedback field, and a comment field. <coughs> Why to inject to check if the application is vulnerable or not. So we can, we can see they have given lots of things. And According to the, according to this, we can say this is also a command field or we can try SQL injection, we can try OS command injection. For OS command injection, we can see So this is also a part of your injection over here. Command injection is an attack in which the goal is to execute arbitrary commands on the host operating system by vulnerable applications. See. The command injection attacks are possible when an application faces unsafe user. So uns supply the data from cookies, HTTP headers, etc. So it's all about the loopholes. For example, let's let me show you one thing. You have to when you are doing a web application testing part or you you are doing some uh, PT part, you have to check all the things one by one. For example, uh, let's see if I can intercept the request. Yes, I can intercept the request. So what I'm going to do, repeat mode, repeater. So drop the packet. So over here in the browser, go back. Yes. So I'm going to check OS command injection over here. So let's try, let's try the backslash again. We can see what will happen. 
Yeah, simply I can see it's pinging the machine. And we can see the output. But what I'm going to do, in the OS command emission attack, we simply merge two queries in a single syntax. For example, this is an IP address, IP with a parameter and the value. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a semicolon, semicolon to add two queries in a single syntax. So I'm going to use some 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 kind of uh, command, like just like which command. Which command is basically used to find the specific application on the server side. So I'm going to use, let's say, which Python. Let's see. Yes, yeah, over here you can see user bin Python over there. Uh, there is one question, Pato. Uh, yes. For when when we are uh, when we are using repeater, okay, uh, mm -hmm. is are the logs have been generated over there or it just go, uh, go, uh, is going into a loop? There will be logs. There will be log there on the end user, uh, like on the customer end, right? Yeah, exactly. uh, okay, there will be log. Huh? Yeah. Okay. okay. So you can see over here that there is an OS command that you can see user bin Python is over there. I use the which Python command. Hmm? So if I use get etc password, I can see in the back end it's running cat etc password also. See this one. And over here, I can see in the etc password, there is a user called J John or Harold. Let's see what, what else we can do. So as an attacker, the main objective of the attacker would be to gain a, a, sh a shell on the server side. Hmm? So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to check if we can get a reverse shell. So over here, I'm going to remove this one. And I'm going to use, uh, do we have Perl over there? Which spelling is wrong? Which spelling is wrong? Uh, sorry. Thank you. Yes, we have Perl over there. Hmm? So over here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to look for a reverse shell. So for the best website, I'm going to go and test monkey. So over here, we're going to go to the pen test, uh, not reverse shell, pen test monkey. Uh, so you see Pentas Monkey, JDN notes. And over here, we're going to use any of the reverse shell. These all are reverse shell cheat sheets. You can see if you are luckily enough to find a command execution vulnerability during a pen test, pretty soon afterwards you will probably want to do interactive shell. Yes, we want an interactive shell. So over here, I'm going to use the Perl one over here to get a reverse shell. So I'm going to copy this one and uh, I'm going to do some changes. So as a hacker and tester, we, we try to gain reverse shell. So over here, my IP address is 192.168.0. So, what I'm going to do, this is the Perl, normal Perl reversion. So, you have to change the IP address. So, over here, I'm going to change my IP address 192.168.0.1010. And for receiving IP address, I'm going to use I'm going to change the port number. Why? Because when the payload will execute, we will, we will get a connection back. So uh, over here, I'm going to use a normal port, which is, will be 4448. It should be not busy on your local server. 
So I'm going to copy this one. And before to execute that command, I'm going to use the netcat. Netcat is basically used to uh, make a, a, a connection with the target, a connection with the client or server, or it basically used to share files also. They, in netcat, it is there are lots of ways that we can use it. So I'm going to use numeric listening verbose port. Uh, so over here on the port number 44448. So I simply activated a listener on my local server. Why? Because when I'm going to execute the payload, the, the, uh, the payload will have a listener to, to get the connection back. So I'm going to use the net set again to pause verify. So over here on the back end, I can see the port 4480 is open on the netcat part. So what we're gonna do uh, on the burp switch, I'm gonna place this shell. So I'm gonna copy this entire shell and uh, I'm gonna paste it over here. So let's do. And over here, I can see okay, but uh, we didn't get the any connection back because we were basically checking is it working or not. So we have 200. So it means it will execute. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use show response in browser, copy this one, and I'm going to paste it over here. And what we have, we have a proper. Do we have a connection? No, we don't. So what I can do, I can simply execute the payload over here also. Oops, sorry. So over here we can execute the payload from here also because the, uh, over here we also have the vulnerability. So I'm gonna paste it over here and execute. And I can see that this is totally running over there. A normal, but if I check over here, I get a shell over there. Is it clear, Babu? Elias? Uh, yes. Yes, yeah, it's clear. Yes. So over here, with the help of Burp Suit, we can do lots of things. And as an attacker, we find lots of vulnerabilities, SQL injection, process scripting reflected. You can see OS command injection was there in the Burpsuit module part. And uh, we can see that we have a shell on the server side. So as a pen tester, when we, when we, gain, we, when we use the footprinting part, the scanning part, the enumeration part, now we are on the part of gaining access and maintaining access. Now what we have to do, we have to do post exploitation part, the previous creation part, and the log analysis. So for that case, we are on the server side. So let's open our cheat sheet now. So I guess the last time I gave you some uh, links, just like your bot mail. And Paya too. So we're gonna learn. We're gonna take one by one all the vulnerabilities today. So in this first machine uh, of the Chiropetrix, uh second level. So today I'm gonna introduce you an attack on the Paya 2, which is your kernel exploit. Yeah. So we have kernel exploit over here. So kernel exploits are the high level exploits over here. You can see. Kernel exploit are programs that leverage kernel vulnerabilities in order to execute arbitrary code with the evaluated permissions. Successful kernel exploit typically give an attacker super users. And why I'm saying this one, why we are checking the kernel exploit? Because I am not the this root. Who am I? I am Apache. It means I'm a specific user on the server side. I don't have the permission. If I simply Look for ls iPhone all ls iPhone all. So let's do cd root. I don't have permission because I don't have the specific to go to the root directory. 
So what attackers try, attackers try different different types of methodologies and techniques to bypass the level. So in this scenario, you can see in, in the first second attack of exploit, we're gonna learn how an attacker simply perform a kernel exploitation. Because it's all about the, uh, you can say the outdated kernel. Access to the target system in the form of root command prompt. You can see in many cases, escalating to root in kernel Linux is as simple as downloading a kernel exploit in the target file system. Compiling the exploit and then executing it. So we have given a proper thing, take the kernel into running our payload in kernel mode. Manipulate kernel data, for example, process privileges, launch a shell and new privileges and get root. So in this scenario, we're gonna learn how we can use to check the kernel volume. For example, who am I tells you the current user uname if name gives the, us the kernel version which we uh, transfer with the so over here you will you will read the theoretical part from the uh, prior to but if you do if you want to do the practical part you have to check with the bot milk so over here on the bot milk you have to check each and every services over here so Let's move a little bit down so we can see. We can see what is the distribution type and what version. So you can see over here we can check the kernel release version. So I'm gonna check. I'm gonna copy this one. Sorry, I'm gonna copy this one, and I'm gonna run it over here. And I can see the kernel version. The the release version is sent to us 4.5. What is the kernel version? Is it 64 bit? Let's try the uname if a or we can try cat procedure. So I'm gonna use the uname if a the normal one. So uname if a So over here I can see the Linux the, the Linux kernel version is 2.6.9. So as a pen tester, as a security analyst, you have to check each and everything on the server. For example, this machine is vulnerable to kernel exploit. You can try, there are lots of other ways also. So we're gonna try today the kernel exploitation part. So we're gonna look for the specific version of the kernel. So I'm gonna use CentOS 4.5. I'm gonna copy this one and uh, I'm gonna look for the vulnerability over here. Let's look for the exploit. So when I simply write the release, uh, kernel release version 4.5, I can see there are some uh, exploit DB data. So I'm gonna look for the first one. So uh, Linux 2.6.9, white box, CentOS 4.4, 4.5, Fedora core, you can see. And this is a proper thing that we have to do. This is the kernel exploitation part. It's all assembly. And over here, when you are doing a pen testing, when you are using a kernel, please read the text files over here. Kindly read all the things for the necessary thing. For example, see, they are using GCC to compile the file. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna download this one. Or what I can do, I can simply build this copy. No, this is the one I didn't copy. So over here we have downloaded the exploit, which is a C compiled file. You can see. So I'm gonna transfer in my exploit folder, and in exploit folder I'm gonna open my terminal and I'm gonna cross verify. So you can see. Um, it could be, uh, let's use file utility to check the file type. So I can see this is C source file. So over here, before executing the kernel, we have to check is the GCC compiler is available on that or not. So I'm gonna write which GCC. 
So I can see yes on the local server of the uh, victim side we have GCC over there. So let's root ls open all and uh, yeah. So over here, remember one thing: when you are uploading or downloading some files, uh, there are some few folders that we have permission. Any uh, any of the uh, you can say. A user can download any files. So the one is your temp directory. So we can go to the CD temp. On the temp directory, we can download our exploit over here, and I'm gonna run this one. So what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna share this file. So I'm gonna use a Python server, a Python server to make an FTP server on my local server. So I'm gonna use Python ifnm method, simple HTTP server. So through this command, I'm gonna make a specific exploit folder to an FTP. So you can see on the back end that let's start ANTUP. Hmm. So this machine can interconnect with the base machine also. So over here we can see the 8000 is running in the local machine. Uh, let's cross verify over here. You can see this one is basically we can see the file over here that it basically can integrate in this. So over here, the main objective that we're gonna do is we're gonna share the file over here. So I'm gonna transfer that file on my local server. So what I'm gonna do when I uh, over here, I'm gonna use the wget command to fetch the file. So it will be HTTP. We have to specify the URL. So on the port 8000 and the file name 95042.c. And you can see the file has been saved. So our main objective that I'm going to do over here, I'm going to check. So I'm going to use GCC compiler as per the need. So GCC. Iphone O, which is your output, output to save. I'm gonna name this output as exploit, and I'm gonna name this 549542.c file. And through the GCC, we gonna give an exploitation part, uh, execution permission. And I'm gonna compile this file for the execution process. So hit enter, ls iphone all, and over here I can see the file has been created with the exploit name which I've given. And it has the execution permission also. So it has permission to root also. <coughs> so exploit and hit enter. So over here we can see now we have hash over there. So if I write who am I, I can see I am the root. Now, as a permission of root. I can simply access anything over there. For example, cat, etc, sudo or files. Most of the attackers, they simply check this file. Because in sudo or files, all the permissions, all the users have specific permissions over there. There are many ways that we can do. Or we can see now I'm a now I'm root, so I can do lots of things. And as an attacker, you have to specify each and every vulnerabilities over there. So in this machine, it's all it was all about your kernel exploitation. The kernel exploitation we have done today. And you can see you can you have to read this all thing. And the got me because these are the cheat sheet you can see. So we're gonna use all the six type of attacks in our upcoming sessions. And these are the cheat sheets that we're gonna use for what is a distribution type, what is a kernel version, what can we learn for environment variables. These all are the profile specification part on the specific user. So this was a proper application part that is used in the real life standards.
So there are many other things that we can try. Are so, there other methods also other than this to exploit this machine? There are lots of other methods, sir. Okay, so maybe okay. If this is one, uh, I think we can try for some other method, maybe by ourselves. Have any yeah. problem? Exactly, sir. 